Obviously, this is a very special day in the life of our church family. It is for us um, a return to what we love the most, the fellowship of the saints and the worship of our Lord. There have been people all across the country and around the world affirming that we're gathering, thankful that we're gathering and assigning on with us. And there have been many people who don't understand why we would do this. We understand that. We understand that the world does not understand the importance of the church. The world doesn't understand that it's not just essential, it's the only hope of eternal life for doomed sinners. People have been very concerned to make sure people's physical lives are protected and the process shut down places where there's hope for their spiritual lives. Welcome back to The Cross Reference. I'm Joe Shrew, and that was John MacArthur from Grace Community Church in California. And that's when he opened his doors back open after the COVID lockdowns in California, but not really. See, John MacArthur um, opened his doors really, really early. If we go to um, CNN, California church defies public health orders, holds indoor services for thousands with no social distancing. And if you, and if you look here, this article is from August 13th of 2020. So he opened his doors in summer of 2020. I believe it was July 28th, actually. CNN goes, goes on to report, To hear Pastor John MacArthur tell it, all Grace Community Church did was open his doors, and the people came like animals to Noah's Ark. Oh, you got to love the... You gotta love the candor from CNN. Um, the mega church in suburban Los Angeles had closed its doors in mid-March because of the coronavirus pandemic. It announced plans to reopen in May, but a federal court upheld the state's ban on indoor services. The church reopened in late July. Quote, people started slowly coming back, MacArthur told CNN on Tuesday, and they just kept coming until there were six or seven thousand. You see, if you go on and, and, and you follow some of what John MacArthur has said, when the when the pandemic had had originally hit, we all know it hit the United States around you know lockdown started mid March. He shut down as well. Um, most people did not know what was going on. All they knew was something was in the air, and it was told that this is going to be horrible millions upon millions upon millions of people are going to die so any rational human being is going to take that with caution and grace community church did and john macarthur shut their doors for a couple of months but they ended up reopening in july and they got a lot of backlash but john macarthur goes on to say why he stayed open um in the sermon we must obey god above men. I believe that's the name of the sermon. Let's go back here and check real quick. Um, we must obey God rather than men. Yes. In that sermon, and I recommend you watch that. I'll put it in the link. I'll put it in the descriptions below. I'll put the link there. Great sermon as I was preparing for this, uh, for this segment. I just found myself just continuing to listen. I've heard this sermon before, but it's just, it's a great sermon. Go watch it. Uh, the link's in the description below. But He's, he, he begins um, speaking on this subject. He welcomes back the church, and um, he gets into Matthew chapter 5, when Jesus is talking about, you all are the salt of the earth. You know, salt preserves, you know what I mean? And um, Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth. What good is salt if it's lost its flavor? It'll be thrown out and trampled under, underfoot. Um, you are the light of the world. Nobody lights, a, lights a, a lamp and puts it under a basket. Nobody does that. Well, John um, continued to speak on that passage, and this, this is what he had to say. 
Salt has to be salt. Light has to be light for God's glory. I love what it was said of John the Baptist. He was a burning and shining light. Through all the history of God's redemptive work in the world, civil rulers have worked against God's people, have sought to overrule God, to abuse their sphere of power by stepping into the world of God's kingdom and trying to take authority. Pharaoh abused his authority over Israel, and he was drowned. Saul overstepped the limits of his God-given sphere and lost his throne. Solomon corrupted his reign with gross immorality and destroyed the kingdom. Subsequently, all the kings of the north, Israel, were evil, and there were nineteen of them in a row that came under the judgment of God. Fourteen of the twenty kings in the southern kingdom of Judah were evil, overstepped their bounds, came under the wrath of God along with the people who were their subjects. Nebuchadnezzar exalted himself above God and became a madman. Belshazzar exalted himself above God and suffered the consequences. And that, by the way, those two kings take us back to the book of Daniel. As we read, Daniel disobeyed the king because the king told him to disobey God, not to pray. He only asked for thirty days of submission, temporary mandate. Daniel threw open his windows and for those thirty days prayed publicly and openly three times a day. In the New Testament in Acts 12, Herod, the king, became proud, overstepped his limits and instantaneously was eaten by worms. The Apostle Paul often disobeyed rulers who wanted him to deny the Lord Jesus Christ and stop preaching, and he refused to do that. And he was beaten with sticks and with whips, stoned, run out of town, put in jail, and eventually the Romans decapitated him. So. As John's reopening the church at Grace Community Church and opening the doors and giving his first official sermon after defying the local government's mandates on shutting down churches, these are the this is this is the the picture he's trying he's painting to the congregation and to the people of God that throughout biblical history there has been ruler after ruler after governmental authority after governmental authority that decided they were going to disobey. They were going to supersede the Word of God, and they all paid with penalties. And then you have men who stood up, people of God who stood up and said, no, I'm going to obey God above government. So as John's painting this picture, opening the doors of the church and giving this sermon and defying the governmental authorities, I mean, all of society is like, how dare he open the doors? What is he doing? Well, he knows, just like most of us do, that that the First Amendment protects freedom of religion. You, You cannot tell churches they cannot operate, especially when you deem essential businesses as things like casinos that stayed open, liquor stores that stayed open, very unessential places, and that's just to name a couple, that were allowed to stay open. But the church, when people are in in need of answers, 
spiritual guidance, hope. The churches around this country shut their doors because they were told to. Well, John MacArthur and Grace Community Church decided they weren't going to do that. They were going to obey God above the government. And he goes on, and he goes on to speak about this. And he gets into, um, I believe it's Acts chapter 4. I, I should have my Bible here, my John MacArthur study Bible. I love that man. Um, pray for him, by the way, and his wife as they start to get older in age and start to deal with health health issues. But I love that man. But I don't have my, my MacArthur study Bible with me right now. But I believe it's Acts chapter 4 when um, Peter and John are preaching and... The Pharisees come to them and say, no, 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 stop preaching. Stop. Stop preaching. And this is where uh, we hear John pick, pick that little part up. When they brought them, they stood them before the council, the high priest questioned them, saying, we gave you strict orders not to continue teaching in this name, and yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Here it is. Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than men. Get that? We must obey God rather than men. Does this mean we have no responsibility to our leaders? Not at all. God has ordained human government for the peace and well-being of temporal society. Romans 13, we are to recognize the authorities are designed by God. We are to submit to them in the sphere in which God has designed them to operate. We are to do more than that. We are to honor them, show them respect. Through the years we have done that here. We continue to do that with the authorities in our city, every opportunity we have. We render to Caesar what is Caesar's. We even have been called, 1 Timothy 2, to pray for their salvation as I did this morning. When orders come, however, to us that contradict the orders of our King, we have to obey God rather than men. The feedback on this has been really wonderful. One argument continues to be made, why didn't you do this at the beginning? Number one, we didn't know the extent of the disease, the illness. We were told millions were going to die. It was just sensible and rational to be protective. As time went on, however, we found out the virus was not as deadly as predicted. And the commands not to assemble didn't apply to protesters and riots. And little by little, Sunday by Sunday, you kept coming back. We didn't send out an order. You just kept showing up. The first two weeks, I preached to no one. I preached to Patricia, <laughs> which is pretty routine for me. But the, by the third week, all of a sudden there were people here, and then the fourth week and the next week, and here we are. You kept coming back. Why did you come back? You came back because your heart cries out to be here. This is where you live and move and have your being. This is where you live, move, and have your being, John MacArthur says. He says, y'all just kept coming back, little by little, and filled up the sanctuary. You know, and I did notice, um, you got to keep in mind, also in July of 2020 is when all the, the riots were happening across our country. And it, it seemed like that was more or less allowed, but churches couldn't open their doors. 
I think it. He, he think it's kind of interesting how he made that point as well. So why am I saying all this? Well, because this was kind of a big deal, and he went he went back and forth through the courts and and lawsuits, and I think they were fined every single time they opened the doors. If I if I remember correctly, if we go over here to uh, Eyewitness News. Uh, ABC 7, L.A. County to pay $400,000 in a settlement with Sun Valley Church that defied COVID health orders. Can I get an amen? <laughs> he took it all. The Grace Community Church took it all the way to the courts. Let's see what it says here. A Sun Valley Church that repeatedly flouted health restrictions during the COVID-19 pandemic will be paid $800,000 to settle its legal battle with Los Angeles County and the state with the County Board of Supervisors voting Tuesday to pay half of the costs. Los Angeles County has already spent more than 950000 in attorneys and, and fees and other costs in the case of Grace Community Church, according to a legal summary provided to by the board. Um, led by Pastor John MacArthur, the church defied county health orders again and again over the past year. Most notably by continuing to hold indoor services despite a ban on such gatherings while also refusing to enforce mask wearing and physical distancing requirements for church goers. So he took it all the way to the courts and he won. Grace Community Church stood on God's principles, God's commands, God's word, and the United States Constitution and won. Praise be to God, and thanks be to God for people like John MacArthur. I really wish in my heart of hearts that when all this was going down, that, I mean, more than 99% of churches, I would just guess, that shut their doors would have had the, the, the same inkling to open up sooner. After a couple of months, but so many churches stayed shut down. Not John MacArthur. And he won. Praise be to God for that. Praise be to God for that. So, the interesting part about all this is, now there's a documentary coming out. And I want to share this with you. I am so excited about this one, guys. This is the whole point of the video. I, I, I set it up, I tossed it up so that we can knock it out of the park. So if you go to EssentialChurchMovie.com, Grace Media, which is Grace Community Church, that's their media group, have come out with a documentary covering all of this. And I am so excited to see this. It comes out in theaters July 28th. And um, if you come here and go to get tickets now there's not a ton of theater showing this but if we can get if we can get on the ball and and fill up the theaters that are playing this maybe we can get it released in more theaters i mean we've already seen things like this happen little side little side note um from the sound of freedom y'all i'm sure we've all heard of the sound of freedom that's done by angel studios who does the chosen the uh the 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 tv series the chosen with jesus following jesus through the gospels um we're starting to see hollywood non-hollywood flicks in theaters outdo hollywood because hollywood has just gone to the point to where nobody wants to watch the garbage anymore Nobody wants to see the ideo the, the ideologies of of this this culture that's that's going far downhill shoved in our throats every day through our movies, our music, and our and our and our TV shows and everything because it's nonstop. But when somebody actually like, like like Angel Studios, when they actually do a, a a a a good movie based on great morals, fighting fighting um, trafficking and patriotism i mean i mean look, look at top gun too it did great in the box offices um but let's, let's check this out from breitbart sound of freedom crosses 100 million dollar mark and the point i want to 
the thing I want to point out here is, uh, let's see, thanks to a Wednesday haul of another 4.5 million, Angel Studios Sound of Freedom has crossed the magic $100 million, $100 million mark at the domestic box office. That is awesome. This is the part I wanted to highlight right here. As Breitbart News reported Tuesday, Tom Cruise's seventh outing as Ethan Hunt enjoys the advantage of playing in 1,000 plus more screens. So meaning um, uh, Mission Impossible play, played in 4,327 screens and Sound of Freedom only played in 3,265. And they're still doing so well, the Sound of Freedom is. That's kind of what I wanted to point out there, because if we can go to these to these these few theaters that are actually playing this documentary, and fill them up and watch this great documentary of a church that stand that decided to stand on the word of God and keep their doors open and serve the people of God with the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. If we can get in there and support a church that did this and defied the government. When they ordered, when, when they went against the word of God, maybe we can get it in more theaters and get more people seeing it, and we can kind of see a sound of freedom effect go on for the glory of God. That would be awesome. But anyways, EssentialChurchMovie.com. You go here, you so get my tickets now. And um, you can put in your zip code and see if there's a theater around you. One tip that I will show you um, when you go to uh, hit the tickets tab you got check Fandango for showtimes. You got check Adam tickets for showtimes. I already got my tickets. We'll be there at 5.30 on Saturday watching this awesome documentary. I'm so excited. But the point I wanted to make was I got my tickets through Adam tickets. Because when I went to Fandango, I looked. And the closest uh, theater to me um, called this Lucky. But it was only it was like 45 miles away. I'm like, oh, man, that's, that's a drive. But I, I was still going to go. But then when I checked Adam Tickets, I found one like eight miles away. So the theaters seem to, uh, you, you can get different, tic- different theater listings depending on which one of those you pick. Um, but yeah, so I'll, I'll be there. And, and another note, the theater that I'm going to is a pretty nice theater. And they're only showing the essential church. One time at 5.30 on Friday, one time at 5.30 on Saturday, one time at 5.30 on Sunday. Guys, we've got to get to the movie theaters, and we've got to pack out those theaters. Let's make them have no other choice but to keep playing this movie. Please, please, I'm really hoping that we can, we can make this happen, because I have a feeling we're, we're not going to be let down by this documentary. This looks like an incredible documentary. Um, I, I believe they even say in, in some of the frequently asked questions here, um, let's see, it's, uh, there are no showings near me yet. No. How many theaters will the essential church be showing in? It says our goal is to have this shown in as many theaters as possible by spreading the word about this film and purchasing tickets. You can help increase the chances of the essential church premiering in more theaters across the nation. Just what, just what I was saying. So let's get on the ball and let's make that happen. Because like I said, I don't think we're going to be let down by this, by this uh, documentary. I mean, what better, what better documentary than a church who decided to stand on the Word of God and the United States Constitution and say we're not closing our doors, we're not doing it, and winning. I love it. I just love it, and I love John MacArthur, and like I said, pray for him and his wife, for Patricia, because they've, um, they're getting older, and they're having health issues. Um, hopefully, the, hopefully the Lord will let, uh, let, us, let us have John MacArthur for many more years to come, but keep him and his wife, Patricia, in your prayers. Um, anyways, guys... That that's it. I just wanted to I just wanted to hit that and throw that out there and show and, and show y'all that this is hitting theaters on Friday. Get out there and watch the documentary. It's going to be epic. Anyways, do all the cool things, you know. Like, subscribe, share. Do it. If you like it, if you like the content, um, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell. Definitely share this. Share this video. I'm gonna leave you guys with um 
the uh, the teaser for the documentary. And thanks again for joining me on the cross reference. Remember, whether you eat or drink, just do it all to the glory of God. See you guys next time. There may be times when you will go to court, but the issue would be this, that wherever the word of God or the work of God is at stake, I have the right to claim my legal privileges. If, for example, some ordinance came along and tried to close down Grace Community Church, would we say, oh, it's all right, we forgive you, we'll all go home and just forget the work of God? Not on your life. We'd be down there with every sort of legal thing you could imagine trying to prove that we had the right to exist. It's a matter of protecting the privileges that God has given us for the proclamation of his word. When did you come to the decision that you were okay with suing the government? How far back do you want to go?